Hey everyone, and welcome to my Conqueror's Blade Weapons Guide. In this video, I will be going over what the best weapons are in Conqueror's Blade, and helping you choose what the perfect weapon is for your playstyle. To start off with, I'll give you guys a quick background on my experience so far with the different weapons in Conqueror's Blade, so you know which weapons I have the most and least experience with, so you know where I'm coming from. As you can see by my weapon stats and playtime, my most played weapons are Maul, Short Sword, and Poleaxe. When I first started playing in Season 2, my favorite and most played weapon was Bow but at the moment it is a mix of Maul and Short Sword for Territory Wars. My least played classes are Spear, Shortbow, and Dual Blades. With that context out of the way, let's get started with possibly the most contentious weapon right now in Conqueror's Blade, the Spin to Win. Some people love it, most people hate it. This is Maul. Maul is all about grabbing heroes and throwing them into your pikes or javelins, and dealing massive damage with the Mjolnir into Bonebreaker combo. Personally, I like Maul a lot not because of the grab, but because it's one of the few classes where I feel like I can actually take down heavily armored shield troops in high level games. Maul is great to use with any unit, but especially pike and drywall units for easy kills. I don't think the weapon is all that overpowered as it's very slow and can't do much besides grab people and spin around, but I expect it to get nerfed pretty soon because of all the complaints about it, so take it for a spin while you still can. Next up, we have the Tang. This is of course, the short sword. Possibly the most annoying class to fight against, as once Ironsides is activated, the short sword is basically invincible for 8 seconds. This allows you to do things no other class can do, like running through four Brasio pikes and knocking them all down with Thunderstruck while you advance with your Imperial Pike Guard. Other than the short sword's extreme tankiness, the class also has good AoE and single target crowd control in Thunderstruck, Shield of Charge, and Throw Shield, as well as having decent damage. This makes the short sword one of the best classes for both fighting enemy units and dueling enemy heroes. Short Sword is great with any frontline unit, my personal favorite being max level Imperial Pike Guard and Celadars. And what pairs best with the Short Sword player? That's right, next up we have the Support. Also known as the Long Sword. I hope you don't like the dopamine rush of seeing large numbers slash in your face, because you aren't getting them. Long Sword deals almost no damage, but is the ultimate support class for allied units and heroes, and in my opinion, one of the most underrated classes in the game. Longsword's support kit comes from three main abilities. With Knightly Vows, you are able to speed up allied troops to get off quicker charges, surprising your enemy with fast flanking charges or quick IPG advances. With Mercy of Heaven, you are able to heal allied troops for a percentage of their health, so you can pair this with tanky units like Imperial Spear Guards to absorb all the frontline damage for your team while they flank around and or lay down heavy musket fire. Lastly, the Sally Forth ultimate ability allows you to run around knocking down enemy troops and heroes for a few seconds. This is good to counter enemy charges or advances, or lock down enemy heroes while your troops kill them. My favorite unit to use with Longsword right now is Celadars, as you can speed them up to cover commander right onto enemy heroes or units, sally forth to knock them down, and then use your decapitate ability to quickly kill them. After that, you can pull them back and heal them with your hero until your abilities are off cooldown. If you want to be extra annoying, max out your Imperial Spear Guard and sit behind them healing with their innate heal ability as well as Mercy of Heaven, and you will have an unbelievably strong frontline. Once you get tired of playing Longsword and getting very few kills, try your next weapon out. Next up we have the CC Machine. This is of course the Poleaxe. Poleaxe is the king of crab control with two knockdowns, an old bill hook and pushback, which are on short cooldowns, and an ult that locks an enemy hero in place for around 5 seconds. The Poleaxe is great for securing kills on out of position heroes and knocking down troops on the front line so they can't use their abilities. I'd recommend going full armor Polex as you'll still be dealing plenty of damage regardless. Polex pairs nicely with high damage units like Javelins, Celadars, and Fortabrasio Pikemen. Our next weapon is for the heavy armor flares that want to dish out even more damage. This is the Bruiser. AKA Glaive. Glaive has something for everyone. It has a short cooldown stun in Warlord's Greetings that you can use on units or combo on enemy heroes into your Flying Reaper and Breaker of Shields to do tons of damage. You also have utility with your ability to give your allied units an attack damage buff for 10 seconds with God of Battles. Glaive is a really fun class to play and I'd recommend everyone trying it out. I took it to our last Territory War when I switched from my full armor to full strength build and I was destroying people. Although I also got one shot by a volley of Imperial Archers from behind while I was on a wall, so there is that. Glaive pairs well with any unit in the game, as it also has extra damaging abilities that you can use while on horseback. For our next weapon, this is the medium armor equivalent to Glaive. This is the Populist. 
otherwise known as Nadachi, or that one big sword. This is pretty much everyone's favorite weapon when they first start playing Conqueror's Blade. Nadachi is known for being one of the best dueling classes in the game because of its good damage and single target CC, as well as being able to lifesteal off of troops and heroes to stay in combat for a long time. Personally, this is one of my least favorite classes, as I found myself dying too often and not being able to push points effectively. It was still fun for the occasional big damage and big lifesteal moments, but I would only pick this when you first start playing, and I wouldn't plan on bringing this to any serious territory wars or high level sieges, as you'll die far too quickly to make a difference. Speaking of making a difference, do you want to make an impact but you're indecisive about which class to pick because you want a bit of everything? Then our next weapon is perfect for you. This is the Jack of All Trades. Are you unsure whether you want to play ranged or melee? Have utility or do lots of damage? Focus on unit kills or hero kills? Then you're in the right place. Musket has a little bit of everything. You can use Liquid Fire, Caltrops, and Black Powder Grenade to focus on pure utility and unit killing. Or you could go with Fine Gunpowder and Scattershot if you want to be all about dueling and killing enemy heroes. Musket isn't great at any one thing, but it's not terrible at anything either. So if you want an all around decent weapon class, then go with Musket. Musket goes well with musket units or shield units like Spear Sergeants to protect you while you deal damage from up close. If musket just isn't killing those pesky enemy heroes fast enough for you, then you might be interested in this next weapon. This is the Assassin. I'm of course talking about dual blades. Dual blades is all about one thing and one thing only. Killing enemy heroes. There's not much else to say about it. Killing heroes is the whole gimmick of this class. I used to think dual blades is pretty useless as I play full armor builds and I had been a terrible dual blades when I first started the game. But now that I've seen God play in our territory wards as dual blades, he has shown me the ways of the dual blade. I now respect dual blades ability to secure vital hero kills in both high level sieges and even in territory wars. I still think many other classes are more useful, but as a niche class it can give you an edge over your opponents when played by a really skilled player. If you want the closest thing to the range equivalent of dual blades, then this next weapon will be a good fit for you. This is the Mosquito. Also known as the Short Bow. You might be wondering why I call this weapon the Mosquito, and the reason is because when playing against this class, they would generally tink you for barely any damage, and most of the time they are nothing more than a minor annoyance. But there are those rare occasions where you don't have the right protection and they end up killing you. Shortbow is my least played class, I only recently played it when making a new character to play with my friend who just started, but I can tell you playing against Shortbow as a full armor short sword, I laugh every time a Shortbow thinks they can try to kill me. The only thing they are somewhat useful for is harassing enemy ranged units now that bow has been nerfed into the ground, but they are still subpar at even that, so I can't possibly recommend this class, but maybe if I played it a bit more I would come to like it. Speaking of classes I haven't played much of, the only other class I hadn't played before making this video was the next weapon on our list. This is the Professional. Spear is my least played weapon, as in I played a couple games with it to get footage for this video. However, from everything I've seen in my games and heard from more experienced players, Spear is a higher skill cap weapon that exceeds at dueling enemy heroes and its average at killing units. I look at Spear as a more lightly armored glaive, but with higher damage output and less utility. Having said that, usually the players playing Spear will destroy you in a 1v1, so just watch out for that. After playing Spear for this video, I had such a good time with it that I'm going to be loving Spear as my main class for a while after this, so I definitely suggest trying it out. I have a feeling it is one of those underrated classes that doesn't get the attention it deserves. Now onto our last and final weapon that deserves absolutely no attention. This is the Nerf Gun. This is of course, the bow. In all seriousness, I was a bow man when I first started playing in Season 2, and back then bow was really strong, probably an S tier weapon when played by a good player. You could wipe out enemy archer units in seconds with explosive arrow and by comboing bodkin arrow and fire arrow with your normal attacks. You could also pick off enemy heroes on horseback and field battles with ease. However, these days its damage and ability to wipe out archer units, let alone heroes, has been nerfed into the ground so hard that it's almost not even worth mentioning. Explosive arrow barely does any damage, and the stamina usage of drawing your bow is one of the least fun mechanics in the game. My suggestion is don't touch the bow until it gets some much needed love, and go live out your Robin Hood fantasies in a different game. That concludes all the weapon descriptions. To finish up the video, I have made tier list of all the weapons for two different brackets. The first bracket is for when you're under level 100, and the second bracket is for level 100 plus and territory wars, where you will face more heavily armored units. I'd be curious to hear what others think, so let me know if you agree with these tier lists or where you would rank the weapons. 
Lastly, as I close out, I will just go through my skill pages so you can see what I've unlocked for each weapon to give you a sense of what I have or have not tried for each class. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you made it all the way to this point, please make sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this and comment down below what you think is the best weapon in Conqueror's Blade.